fear or confidence? Which feeling do you prefer? Well, no doubt you prefer confidence, but life isn't that simple, is it? For example, if you just lost your job or you're going through financial struggles, you might prefer to be confident about the future, but how do you feel inside? You feel nervous. You might feel scared. Or if you're going through health problems, you might prefer to be confident about your future, but how are you in naturally inclined to feel? You're scared. You're nervous. Or you might prefer to be confident about where this world is headed, but then what do you see? You see natural disaster, violence, sickness. So then what do we naturally feel? Maybe fear. What's the point? Well, the challenges we face as humans are overwhelming, and sometimes it feels like our confidence depends on our circumstances. But did you know the Bible shows us a way that you and I can face the future with confidence despite any challenges that we might face? I invite you to open to Psalm chapter 46 as we consider verse 1 and 2. And notice how this servant of God despite facing challenges, was able to face the future with confidence. How? Notice it says, God is our refuge and strength, a help that is readily found in times of distress. That is why we will not fear. Though the earth undergoes change, though the mountains topple into the depths of the sea. So did you notice verse 2? What does he say? He says, that is why we will not fear unstoppable confidence. How? Why? Was it money? Was it philosophy of men that gave him this confidence? No, look at verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength. In other words, trusting in God was the key to confidence. Now, we've heard that phrase before, trusting in God. Uh, maybe for some, that might sound like an old cliché not effective. But you know, sometimes older things or older methods are actually the most effective. See, they're proven, they're reliable. For example, do you see in the verse here where it says a help that is readily found in times of distress? When was the last time you needed help? Well, for myself, it was a few months ago, I sprained my ankle. I couldn't walk. And I remember finding myself in my living room around all this modern technology. See, I had a smartphone, I had a computer, I had a TV. But let me ask you, do you think any of those pieces of technology helped me to walk? Well, of course not. But you know what did help me? I had some old wooden crutches in the basement. So I dusted those off. And guess what? They were still reliable. They were effective. Those old crutches were a real help in times of distress. What's the point? Well, this phrase, trust in God, it might seem old, but today in this talk, we're going to dust it off, so to speak. And we're going to see that it is still the most reliable, most effective way that you and I can face the future with confidence. So later in the talk, we're going to discuss how we can trust in God. But first, we're going to discuss how Jehovah helps us to face the future with confidence when we do trust in him. The first way he helps us to face the future with confidence when we, when we trust in him is by providing us a wonderful hope for the future. Now, why does that give us confidence? Well, isn't it true as humans, we do not like uncertainty. See, it's impossible for us to have confidence if we have uncertainty. For example, when was the last time you flew on an airplane? Well, before you get on an airplane, there's a destination sign. And under the destination, it says where the plane is supposed to land. But if you were about to get onto an airplane and under destination, it said unknown, would you feel comfortable getting on that airplane with confidence? Of course not. But what if under that destination sign, it said Honolulu, Hawaii? In fact, you get on the airplane and the captain restates the destination and he states the conditions. He says, when we land, it's going to be 70 degrees, sunny, light winds. Now, how do you feel? You feel confident. See, you know exactly what to expect. What's the point? Well, many humans today, when it comes to where this world is headed, 
it is unknown. The destination is unknown. So it's impossible for them to have confidence in the future. Now, on the other hand, Jehovah God has given mankind a wonderful destination. And like that captain, he's even told us the conditions of that destination. What's the destination? A beautiful paradise earth. The conditions? No more sickness. No more death. No more suffering. No more violence. Complete peace. In fact, billions who have died will be brought back to life to live in this paradise earth. Nothing can prevent God's promises from being fulfilled. See, Jehovah at Psalms 37, 29 has said, The righteous will possess the earth and they will live forever on it. Why has Jehovah given us this wonderful destination? Not just once in the scriptures, not just twice, but many times. Well, because he knows that we do not like uncertainty. It does not give us confidence. And he wants you and I to face the future with confidence. So he gives us that hope. Now, a second way Jehovah helps us to face the future with confidence is by helping us now. I invite you to open to Psalm chapter 73, and we're going to consider verse 23 and 24. And notice the psalmist, he's talking to God. Now, God gave him a hope for the future, but what else? What about now? The psalmist says, but now I am continually with you. He's talking to God. He says, you, God, have taken a hold of my right hand. You guide me with your advice, and afterward you lead me to glory. So does Jehovah just give us a hope for the future? Well, notice, do you see the word now in that scripture? And continually? Can you think of somebody that has been with you continually in your life? Well, how about your mother? You know, many of us were blessed with a mother that help us in so many different ways. In fact, if I asked you, what is the role of a mother? How would you answer? Well, you'd probably have many different answers. See, sometimes a mother is a cook. Sometimes she's a nurse. Sometimes she's a teacher. There's a saying that goes, life doesn't come with a manual. It comes with a mother. Right, Because mothers are continually with us in many different aspects of our life. And Jehovah, God, is the same way. He can help us now in many different areas. For example, he can give us wisdom to successfully deal with challenges we face. Now, when I was a small child and I was going to cross the street with my mother, do you know what she would say to me every single time before we crossed the street? I could still hear it in my head. She would say, make sure you always look both ways before you cross the street. See, why do mothers tell that to their children? Well, they want them to have wisdom to successfully cross the street in the future. Jehovah is the same way. See, you and I face challenges. Maybe it's financial struggles. Uh, but Jehovah can give us wisdom to successfully get to the other side of those financial struggles. Maybe we are facing other problems in our life, maybe family problems. Did you know in God's word, the Bible, he can give us advice and principles that will safely help us to get to the other side of those family issues? See, Jehovah gives us wisdom primarily through his word. And like that mother, he wants us to deal with the challenges in the best way possible. Another way Jehovah helps us now is by giving us strength and courage. When I was a child as well, I also recall, besides uh, telling me to look both ways, you know what else my mother usually did? She would reach out her hand. Why do parents hold the hand of their children before they cross the street? Well, it's largely to guide them, but also to give them strength and courage. And Jehovah is the same way, because sometimes it's not a matter of knowing what to do, having the wisdom. Sometimes we also need the strength and courage to act on that wisdom. For example, perhaps we're trying to give up a habit that displeases God, but we feel like we don't have the strength and courage to do it. Did you know God promises to help us with that? So Jehovah will give us the strength and courage now to deal with the challenges that we face. Another way he can help us now is by helping us to develop fine qualities. I used to work at a bank, and I recall... The tellers would give uh, candy to the children, 
And uh, it was a common thing that would happen. And you know what the parents would always remind the children to say when they received the candy? Make sure you say thank you. See, why do parents remind their children to say thank you all the time? Well, they want their children to develop fine qualities to have a successful life. And Jehovah is the same way. He can help you and I now to develop fine qualities such as faith and patience. Now, how does that help us now with our challenges? Well, let's say, for example, we're dealing with health challenges. And those challenges aren't going away. But let's say Jehovah helps us to develop patience. Now with that fine quality of patience, even though that health problem isn't going away, we can endure day to day because we have that quality of patience. Or perhaps he helps us in that same uh, scenario to develop the, the quality of faith. And on those really hard days, because we've developed that quality, we look to our hope in the future. And it helps us to get to that next day. See, in ways like this, Jehovah will help us to develop fine qualities that will help us with our problems now. But sometimes we have the wisdom to deal with a problem. Sometimes we have the strength and courage. Sometimes we have the fine qualities. But then sometimes we just have a bad day. And on those real, really bad days, sometimes we might feel like giving up. But Jehovah can help us even then. I invite you to open to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to consider verse 6 and 7. Notice what we're encouraged to do here. It says, do not be anxious over anything, but in, prayer, but in everything by prayer and supplication along with thanksgiving. Let your petitions be made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mental powers by means of Christ Jesus. So, on those really bad days, we're encouraged to pray to Jehovah. And what does he promise to give us? What does verse 7 say? It says, the peace of God. Now, what does that mean? Well, simply put, it's an inner calm that only God can provide. When you were a small child and you would fall and hurt yourself, who would you run to likely first? Many would run to their mother. Now let me ask you, if there was a doctor next to your mother and you fell and hurt yourself, who would you have ran to, the doctor or your mother? You would have still ran to your mother. Why? Well, because even though that doctor is medically trained, he's a professional, you knew there was nobody who could give you the inner calm that your mother could give you. It's the same with Jehovah. In those really bad days, only Jehovah can give us a certain inner calm that can take that edge off, that can help us to not make a, a foolish decision in life. See, in ways like this, Jehovah will help us now. Jehovah doesn't just give us a hope for the future. He's continually with us now, and that also helps us to face the future with confidence. Now, a third way Jehovah helps us to face the future with confidence is by giving us a worldwide brotherhood that supports us. I invite you to open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are encouraged to support one another. Notice how that's brought out in this scripture. It says, therefore, keep encouraging one another and building one another up just as you are, in fact, doing. So notice this uses that word encouraging. Now, what does that word mean? Well, by some definitions, it means to support and to give confidence. Now, why is it important for us as humans? Well, as humans, when we are doing something hard, we need support. Otherwise, we might give up. Uh, to illustrate, when was the last time you were on a diet? Maybe you were trying to eat healthy. Now, how did you feel at the beginning of that diet? Well, you did your research. You knew exactly what foods not to eat, which foods to eat. 
you're confident until you go out to dinner with some of your friends. See, because then they start to order all the things that you're not supposed to eat and they're so nice, they start to offer it to you. Now what's happening to your confidence? It's starting to go lower. In fact, you're about to give up. You're going to get, eat some of that chocolate cake that your friend is offering you. But then what happens? You look across the table and who do you see? Your friend who is on the same diet. Your diet buddy. See, <laughs> this person is on the same diet and how does it help you? Will you see him resisting the temptation? Now what happens to your confidence? You're like, I can do it too right? See, that support is essential. What's the point? Well, again, if we're doing things that are hard, support goes such a long way for our confidence as humans. And guess what? Jehovah doesn't give us just one diet, buddy. He's given us a worldwide brotherhood of persons who are resisting temptation. In fact, these persons that support us don't just do so in by word, but by love and action. For example, in this picture here, perhaps these servants of God needed food and water. What did their brothers and sisters do? They came to their aid. Because Jehovah helped them now by means of a worldwide brotherhood. So we learned how Jehovah gives us a hope for the future. He helps us now and he gives us support by means of a worldwide brotherhood. We understand it fundamentally, but would you like to see it in real life? Well, at this time, we invite you to watch a three-minute video showing two of Jehovah's Witnesses who have a confident view of the future. Alessandri and I married in June of 2007. At that point, his health was relatively good, but as time went on, he became more and more incapacitated. Now he needs help using the bathroom, buttoning his shirts, shaving, and with his physical therapy treatments. There were times I just felt so alone. But I'm not alone. Really, I never was. And I have the brothers to thank for that. Many brothers would come over to the house to do practical things for us, like maintenance on the house, maintenance on the wheelchair. They really, they were so helpful to us. Beyond the help from the brothers, it's the hope for the future from Jehovah that gives me a better perspective and makes those difficult moments not seem so overwhelming. So for me, when I look at the future, I can really see the new world. I can see Alexandri up and out of his wheelchair. It's like Paul said, all the trials we face today are momentary and light. But the blessings from Jehovah, they're everlasting. And that's what we need to focus on. I was born and raised in Mariupol, Ukraine. I loved my city. It was so beautiful and green. Life there got completely turned upside down. Local authorities would talk about what one side was doing and what the other side was doing. And when you see all the destruction, when you see what's happening in your city, you wonder, now what? What should I do? So then you pray and you realize what you need to do. I knew I had to get out of there, but I didn't know where to go. The brothers helped every step of the way. We were so grateful. They provided us with everything, food, water, electricity. There are no words to describe that kind of love. Prayer is the thing that gets you through. It gives you an inner calm. The Holy Spirit gives you the confidence you need and it strengthens your hope. If you trust in Jehovah, he will never abandon you. There is no point in being afraid of the future when Jehovah is with you. There is no point.
So did you notice? Did the problems of these two Jehovah's Witnesses disappear? No, they didn't. But they trusted in Jehovah, and Jehovah was able to make their fear disappear. They were able to continue with confidence in the future. What was the key for them? It was trusting in Jehovah. So what's the question? The question is, how do you and I trust in Jehovah? Well, that's what we're going to discuss at this time. The first way we can trust in Jehovah is through a study of the Bible by getting to know Jehovah as a loving Heavenly Father. That's how we can make Him our refuge and strength, trust in Him. Now, when you think of that word refuge, what does that mean? Well, maybe we think of shelter and protection. And perhaps that might remind us of a father because a father's role largely is to provide shelter and protection for his family. But let me ask you, if I showed you a picture of a man, would you be able to tell me if that man in the picture is a good father by looking at that picture? Of course not. Why? Well, because you don't know him. But what if I introduced you to the man in the picture? Let's say you had a conversation with him and he said, he started describing to you how he likes to raise his family. He likes to teach them good moral values, right from wrong. He loves to spend quality time with them. And then his kids come into the room. And what's the look on their face? They're beaming. They're happy. They go hug their father. You can tell these children love their father. And then you ask around town about this man's reputation. And you know what everybody says? This man is an excellent father. Now do you trust that this man in the picture is a good father? Yes, the difference, you got to know him. What's the point? Many of mankind today only has an idea, just a picture of who God is. So it's impossible for them to trust him fully. What's the key? Get to know Jehovah through a study of the Bible. In fact, Jehovah's Witnesses offer free interactive Bible courses. By doing so, we can learn to know Jehovah's ways how his servants viewed him, his children, how they trusted in him, how happy they were when they served him. We get to know Jehovah God's reputation through thousands of years of mankind. See, that is going to really help us trust in God. A second way we can trust in God, make God our refuge and strength, is by throwing our anxiety on him. I invite you to open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Now notice this scripture. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time, while you throw all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Now do you notice there's a footnote next to that word anxiety? What does the footnote say? It says, or cares or worries. Now, what cares or worries do you have in your life? Is it health related? Is it family related? Is it world conditions that we see? You know, all of us have cares. Isn't it true? We all have worries in our life. And you know what happens when we carry those day after day? What happens when you carry physical weight for a long time? You start to tire out. That's why Jehovah invites us to throw those worries on him. And if we trust in him, we'll do just that. Uh, To illustrate, I want you to imagine a child who goes to school, a small child with a little backpack, day after day carries that backpack, and at the end of the day, That backpack starts to feel a little heavier than it felt in the morning. But then a loving father comes to pick up that child, and what does he offer to do? Carries the backpack, carries it all the way home. Then the next day, the father goes to pick up the child, and you know what he does? Carries the backpack. And then the next day, you know what the child does? You guessed it. Hands over the backpack. See, Does the father make the backpack disappear? 
No, but he will carry that weight and make it lighter so the child doesn't tire out because the father cares. What's the point? Well, all the cares and worries that you and I carry, Jehovah invites us to hand it over to him. And we can do that primarily through prayer. See, that child trusts that the father is much stronger, so it gladly hands over that backpack every day. Let's trust that Jehovah is much stronger than us. Each day, let's pray to Jehovah. Let's get specific about the worries that weigh on us. What the worry is, why it's a worry, how it makes us feel. And Jehovah, because we're trusting in him, he's not going to make the trial disappear, but he's going to give us the strength and wisdom so that we can successfully deal with that anxiety and not make any foolish decisions or do anything rash. We could ask him for his Holy Spirit and he really will help us. Now, a third way we can trust in Jehovah is by becoming part of his worldwide family of Jehovah's Witnesses. Because fellow believers can strengthen us and help us to build our trust in Jehovah. You know, one time uh, I was living in an apartment and it was badly damaged due to a snowstorm. And so overnight I had to move out of that apartment. But thankfully... A loving family invited me into their home so I could stay with them until I found a new place to live. And, you know, I felt very comfortable moving in with that family. Do you know why? Because I trusted them. And guess what? When I moved in with them, you know what happened to my trust in that family? It grew even more. What's the point? Jehovah God is inviting you to take shelter with his family of Jehovah's Witnesses. And if we trust in him, we will regularly associate with these fellow believers. And in fact, when we do so, our trust in God is going to grow even to the next level. Because we're going to be surrounded by friends who support one another in times of distress. Because it's when we're with each other that we receive that handshake or that hug that we need, or that scripture here at the Kingdom Hall that touches our heart, or that experience. Sometimes we might run into a fellow believer that says they're having a bad day, and in a weird way that encourages us. And it's not because we like to see them have a bad day, but it's because maybe we're having a bad day too. And they're not giving up, they're continuing to struggle, and that encourages us. See, let's be here. Let's trust in Jehovah. Let's be with each other as much as we can, and Jehovah will really help us. In fact, the next opportunity we have to be together is on April 4th to commemorate Jesus' death and to learn how it opens the way for us to enjoy friendship with God and future blessings. So we invite all to go ahead and do that. And if you would like more information, please see any one of Jehovah's Witnesses here today as you're warmly welcome. So at the beginning of this talk, we talked about those old dusty crutches. This phrase, trust in God, we dusted it off in this talk, so to speak. We realized it's not an old cliche. It is an effective, reliable, it's practical, it's a realistic way for you and I to face the future with confidence. We ask the question, confidence or fear, which do you prefer? Jehovah wants you, he prefers for you to have confidence. Many of us have problems, we all have problems. Personal struggles, family issues, financial struggles, world conditions that, that uh, cause anxiety for us. But Jehovah wants us to have confidence. And in this talk, he's reached out his hand and he's reminded us that if we trust in him, he can help us. And how did we learn to trust in him? By coming to know him as a loving Heavenly Father through a study of his word, the Bible. By relying on him through prayer, giving him all our anxieties. And by becoming a part of his worldwide family of Jehovah's Witnesses. So let's do that. Let's take his hand. Let's trust in God. Because if we do... No matter what problems you and I face, if you trust in Jehovah, you can 
face the future with confidence.